So today we're in beautiful Netherlands. We're here with Rob from RetroTech Europe. We're going to go through this facility, this beautiful facility in a gorgeous location. Yeah, let me show you around. Fantastic. This yes. is our office. Yes. <laughs> wow. And it's well ventilated. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. How airtight is it? Fairly airtight. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty airtight. Yes. But it's still, it's not as airtight as the house. Ah, really? Um, so the house is, even though it wasn't built as a passive standard, it yes. falls under passive standard for you. Oh, wow. Price. How old is the house? Uh, originally it's from the 1920s. Oh, wow. It's completely redone. So the external walls remain, everything else is redone. Internally. Internally, yeah. the roof, even the floor went up yeah. and then wow. redone. And then uh, there's a layer of, I believe, VPS that's put on the outside oh, yeah. with a uh, cladding on it. Yeah. Um, Beautiful. So very well insulated. Beautiful. And and this house here is has this, what's its general construction? Um, so it's made of uh, um, like foam concrete. Ah. Um, and there's roofing plates on top of it. Yeah. Um, and actually, the interesting thing is the, the contractor that built this. Yes. Uh, was one of our trainees in one of the at times courses. So oh wow! Super enthusiastic. Yeah, um, yeah. And then he's he's been on it since that training, basically to make every single house very airtight. Wow, that's so we cool. We knew that we wanted him to build this. As Absolutely. Well. So all rigid materials, no real wraps. Yeah, correct. Yeah, all rigid yeah. materials, and that and that tends to work very well. It does. <laughs> it yeah, does. It's, it's very. Well, well insulated, mm. and we're super happy to mm. be able to work as well. It's a nice environment. We've got a well insulated building, so it's very comfortable. Mm, nice views. Yeah. And heaps of light from outside. So there's your boardroom table where all the big deals get done. The big deals, but yeah. also where we provide training and service for any of our customers to make sure that they're up to speed with everything. Cool. And then um, obviously we've got uh, um, computers here where we work. Yeah. So from the Netherlands, we distribute fans. Uh, all throughout Europe. Yep. We've got our distributors in all countries where we work very closely, mm -hmm. closely with. And then, yeah, from here we basically support everyone. We've got our um, gauge calibrations here, cool. repairs. In the back of the building, we have our uh, our large calibration facility for the fans as well, because we yeah. want to make sure that we can deliver yeah. any fan, any order as soon as we can. Of course. Let's have a look at the calibration rig. Yeah, sure. Let's have a look. We're going to go through the calibration of our RetroTech fans. RetroTech fans are very close to our heart at Efficiency Matrix. These are predominantly the fans that we use to test the biggest buildings that we get access to in Australia. Rob is going to take us through this process that they go through in this rig that you guys have engineered. Yeah, true. This rig here is our calibration unit. Actually, mm -hmm. we've got two more smaller ones, different sizes. Yep. Uh, this is our biggest one, <laughs> and this is what we use to calibrate the fans. So the fans have obviously have to be accurate. Depending on the standard, it's different, but the majority of them are around 5% accuracy. Uh, we typically fall quite far below it, actually. Yeah. But we have to prove it, of course, and it has to be traceable, too. So in this unit, what we do is we have our fan on this side. We blow air into the unit, yep. uh, into the unit, and yep. then halfway in this unit, we've got nozzles, yep. um, different sizes depending on how much flow we need. Yep. Uh, so the nozzles can open and close. Cool. And then we basically measure the flow through the fan yep. and the flow over that nozzle and compare it to each other. Wow. And based on that, we know what's happening. Yeah. And then the cool thing is, on every range, so yes. fan has multiple ranges. Yep. Every range, we take nine readings. So that we have readings over different flows for that particular range, not just one point, mm -hmm. but over a full curve, which right. we've taken into our software. And so on the back side of this mm -hmm. unit, we've got uh, big booster fans yep. that suck the air out to yep. make sure that the chamber pressure is always the same. So that the flow through the fan is always leading into a chamber that is an equal pressure, yep. but then at different speeds. Wow. Now, one thing that I see a lot, especially when there's someone who's using a blower door but maybe aren't really trained to use it, they just put random plugs open as long as the number uh, adds up to what the manometer is telling you to have. Yeah. How far out can the result be if the plugs are not left open in the correct locations as documented on the manometer? That's a good question. And I don't have the exact data, yeah. but it does make some difference. So it's yeah. recommended to make sure that whatever plugs you open yep. matches with whatever is on your gauge or whatever is in your software. Of course. The unit that we have here yes. uh, is made by RevTech. Yep. And there's one here in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there's one in at RevTech in the US. Yep. Actually, there's multiples there. Yeah, there would be. Um, and there's one in Australia as well. Yes, there it's is. Another one. Correct. That's yep. in our neck of the woods. Yes, definitely. So it's possible to do calibrations all around the world, basically. Fantastic. 
that's what we need because I mean, especially in Australia where air tightness is now really starting to pick up in its popularity, yeah. we need to have some sort of check on, on, on these fans, but also moving these fans around the world via, via an airplane means that they're going to be exposed to many bangs and bumps as well along the way, yeah. which can also affect calibration. Yeah, you get more and risk, it's, it's more expensive, it takes more time. Correct. Uh, so I mean, having so something. So much easier to have, have it around. It is. Right. Absolutely. Um, now, what standard did this rig get uh, commissioned to? Uh, I'm not sure about the exact number, but I believe there's an ACM standard uh -huh. um, as well as an ISO standard, if I'm correct. Yeah. Um, but then the procedure itself and the standards built to, yeah. um, and whatever we do here, yeah. is accredited by basically ANAP, which is under ILAC, which doesn't really matter too much, but it's yeah. an ISO 17025 calibrated laboratory, ah, uh, which cool. means that everything is traceable. Cool. So we can say that the fan does well, but we can yes. also prove that the nozzles are tested and then the yep. procedure is correct and all that, Right. Um, which makes a big difference. Of cool. So does this actually, this rig actually have to be calibrated too? Uh, it does, yeah. Yeah. Which is uh, quite a bit of a process. Yeah. But in the end, what we're doing here with this fan is we're comparing the fan to our nozzles. Yeah. And then in the end, typically what you do with the calibration of the rig is yeah. again you compare the nozzles to something else. Gotcha. Um, so depending on which unit we have, there's yeah. different procedures for it. But yeah. yeah, those are in the end supposed to be traceable. So yeah. um, when we calibrate. The fans will yeah. have to make sure that our rig is calibrated of and course. compared to someone that's also calibrated somewhere else. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, the other beautiful thing about RetroTech fans as well, when it comes to these fans being out on job sites and any person who might be checking the calibration of these blower door fans, yep. you guys actually have QR codes where you can, someone can just rock up to your fan and check the calibration information, right? Yeah, so there's a QR code on the fan, or yep. you can go to the RedTech website. Yep. Um, or if you have the new DM32X gauge, the yes. calibration is difficult, of the, the gauge at least is in the um, gauge itself as well. Yep. So you yep. can pop it up there. Cool. Um, so yeah, there are multiple ways to check if the calibration was accurate. Yep. So um, no way of around. But on think. site, I mean, yeah, someone can actually check it on site without even the air tightness tester knowing. Yeah, and that's <laughs> a good thing for both yeah. of the parties. So the, whoever's uh, consultant or yep. uh, is attending as a witness, they mm -hmm. can check it yeah. without the other knowing. But the other way around as well, the tester, if, if they would get asked and they don't have the certificate with them, yep. it's always there in the database. Beautiful. So they can show it whenever they want. Awesome. Okay, Rob, let's have a look at your other calibration rigs, yeah? These will be for the duct testers and the high pressure fans. Yeah, correct. Um, as well as actually the smaller ranges on the bigger fans. Ah, yes. okay. So we have big units for yes. the big fans and yes. the smaller units for smaller fans, obviously. This is a lot of uh, back to back fans that you got yeah. here. This is amazing. This is uh, one of the units for the smaller fans or the duct testers. Yep. Uh, so we've got low flow elements. Um, and it's the same concept basically. On the one side we have the fan, yeah. and on the element there it's narrower. This is where we measure the flow. Yep. Um, we have the booster fans on the back side to make sure that we suck any air out to make sure the chamber pressure is always the same. Wow. So yeah, more fans equals more pressure basically. So how much pressure can you put into this? That is a lot actually. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure about the exact pressure, but I believe it's a few thousand pascals. Wow. Yeah. It depends on, on the, the setting of the fan as well, of course. Yeah, yeah. of course. Uh, the ranges with different holes in them. So this can be used for the 500 series and 400 series and 300 series. Yeah, correct. All of the ranges. All of the ranges, yeah. Yep. How accurate is that? Well, I mean, <laughs> all of our fans are um, calibrated up to the same spec. Yeah. Even this one is yeah. within 5% accuracy. Wow, that's the three. And this other unit? Yeah, the unit is basically for any size in between. Ah. So the duct tester, uh, these units start at range 18. Yes. Which is this hole. Ah, uh, yeah. And we can do the range 18 on the other one. On that one as well. Yeah. Gotcha. So it's all the really small plug plates. Yeah. Yep. Basically from B1 down to range 18 is down to this unit. Yep. Um, How busy are you guys calibrating? Uh, it really depends on the, I would say the season. Yeah, of course. So what we typically see is that uh, by the end of the year, around mm -hmm. Christmas, people mm -hmm. go down or over mm -hmm. summertime as well, mm -hmm. um, which is normally a good time for them to go on holiday themselves, yep. send the equipment to us for uh, calibration. Uh, and right. That's about it. Okay. Yeah. So it's not busier in winter, it's busier this time? Uh, actually it is, yeah. Yeah. Wow. 
Yeah. That's cool. Well, there's fluctuations throughout the years, yeah. but because um, yeah. the thing is, the the time that the fan is due for calibration also yeah. depends on when you bought it. Yeah. Okay. So if you didn't buy it over summer, then yeah, yeah people still send it in, obviously yeah. over whatever month it is. Yeah. Cool. Well, thanks for showing us around, Rob. You're most welcome. Glad you came over. Beautiful part of the world. It's just so green. Yeah, it is. It's a great setting for our office. It is. Well. It is. I'm glad we're here. <laughs>